Hello, everybody. It's Mark and Ann. We're back for another exciting blog talk series. What are we going to be blogging, talking about today, Ann? <laughs> we are talking <laughs> about today um, questions that families need to know and ask when they tour a skilled nursing facility or a nursing home. Okay. Interchangeable and then, there. And then part two. Our next one will be on yeah. assisted living or memory care. Yeah, are... uh, we'll be on assisted living and memory care. We'll yeah. do the same thing and just run through because it's a different set of questions, different communities. Yep. Well, let's get down to the nitty gritty. And I think after 25 right. plus years, you know about nursing home and skilled nursing places. <laughs> so let's peel back the curtains and let people know what to ask, what to look for. And let's count this down and get the show going. Sounds great. All right, here we go. And let's get going on our little blog talk here on this blog that you wrote about questions when touring a skilled nursing okay. home facility. So kick it off. All right, here we go. So when you first walk in, um, one of the things you're going to want to do, just your first observation is going to be smell. Mm. It kind of goes without saying. I hear people say it all the time, but in all fairness, um, and, and there's things I'm going to throw in during all of this that talks about really the, the truth about what you're walking into and what you're really going to yeah. see and hear. So when you first walk in, um, smells is a biggie. Um, I, I, smells was a pet peeve of mine and everybody I, knew it and I didn't want the nursing home to smell. Um, but when you have smells, you have to determine to what time you're in the nursing home. Um, if you see that CNAs, if you go and tour a nursing home around 2.30, anywhere between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it mm -hmm. is a shift change, you're probably going to run into some odors on the yeah. hallways. Um, you probably will because they're making last rounds and they're changing and all those kind of things. So you may run into some odor. If you see people that have linen bags in their hand, then, you know, ding, ding, you're going to run into some odors with that because they're changing residents, that kind of thing. But just pay attention. You can tell and just pay attention. And then sounds. Well, and and sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I have to throw in there because I'm like you to where I've been into some places and you're like, oh, OK, wait a minute. But it does not always mean that's a bad thing because mom is home with hospice. And I have to admit that my mom and dad's house odors have changed. So. Yeah. When you've yeah. got people that are wearing adult diapers and they're yes. potting in the porta pot thing, there's ex expected smells, and then there is the okay, there's something wrong smells, right? So right, you're right, and I'm glad you said <laughs> yeah. that because you're right. Yeah. And let me just stick on that for a second because there are residents, and I know people don't want to hear this and believe this, but it is fact. There are residents in nursing homes that. Um, I've said this before, and I'm not trying to be condescending or anything toward anyone, but they revert back and mm -hmm. they're very childlike. And, you know, there are kids that don't want to stop playing because I have to go into the bathroom. And so they end up wetting their pants or something like yep. that goes on. Well, there are residents that just don't want to be bothered. You know, yep. especially if you walk into, <laughs> we've all laughed over the years about this. If you walk into somewhere that has a smoking facility that allows them to smoke, I can tell you by George, they are not missing smoke break for anything, even <laughs> to get changed. So sometimes it's not because staff has ignored them. More times than not, it is not that staff ignores them. It is that they do not want to be changed. And we can't drag them out of a wheelchair. Um, and we're going to talk mm. a little bit about that, too. But anyway, so, yeah, smells. And you're right. Just be logical about that um, and realize what you are walking into. Sounds yeah. and activities. Um, that's always a good one. You know, listen. Listen to how staff's talking to the residents. Listen to how yeah. other residents are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. um, if there's residents up and out and about and those kind of things, that's what you want to see. They they mm -hmm. need to look clean. You want to see that when you walk in. Um, activities may be going on depending on what time of day you're there. Um, you can always hit them for bingo. 
Um, and if and if they're like most nursing homes, it's going to be twice a week because they love bingo. Uh, but you're going to see some activities at some point, you know, when you go in. So just pay attention. Pay attention in the common area. If mm. you walk into a nursing home facility and the common area has an odor that is not a good odor, and there's not residents up there, that kind of thing. Um, it just looks in disarray a little bit. Those kind of yeah. things those are always red flags. Um, yeah. you, know, you really need to start to pay attention. So just just look and and you can tell, um, you know, they'll have pictures up and down the hallways and things like that. And just notice, just pay attention. Heck, I, I'm funny about it at my house with cobwebs, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and take the room and you go around and frantically try to get rid of them. But just pay attention to those little things like that when you walk in, because it's, you know, the devil's in the details. So they say. Yep. And so just yep. look at those details. So going on into environmental, um, when you're looking at the building, if the building is clean and all those kind of things, I mean, you can see all of this for yourself. You can tell if there's clutter in the hallways. And I will tell you, you are not supposed to have clutter in the hallways. And those are for safety. Trip reasons. hazards. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so everything should be on one side of the hallway. That's that's supposed to happen in every nursing home. Okay. So everything on one side of the hallway so that it's out of the way and and things aren't cluttered. Um, the linen carts that are in the hallways and we all see them and there's really they don't have a lot of storage. So linen carts are going to be in the hallway, but they all have covers and the covers should be over the carts. And I can't tell you as an administrator how many times I've walked down a hall and snatched a cover back down over a linen cart. The CNAs don't always have time. I mean, they really yeah, they're busy Just saying yeah. this. They have the hardest job in the building. Mm. So sometimes their time just gets away and they're grabbing yeah. linen and it happens. But pay attention to those little things because somebody should be maybe going behind pulling the linen cart. You just want to make sure everything's clean like that. Um, yeah. The paint that you don't see a bunch of chip paint. Look down at the baseboards. Now, here's another reality check. You are walking into a skilled nursing facility. There are wheelchairs. Yeah. I, I was just saying this to, um, you know, I've been doing a little interim and I was just saying this to the maintenance director yesterday. We were just talking about how hard it is to keep doorways, handrails, walls, because mm. wheelchairs. Yeah, they, true. They Scuff it up. Scratch them up. You know, look, food carts. I mean, food carts going down the halls and just sometimes things happen, but you can tell if it is just wheelchairs have scratched up a little bit, but it's well maintained. And you just yeah. want to see that they're taking care of it. Um, I will. And I've said this in another um, podcast that we did. It's not about the bricks and mortar. Most of the nursing homes in the state of Georgia are old. Yeah, they're the old cinder blocks. Yes. 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 Um, yep. they're, they're cinder block, but Painted that doesn't block. mean they can't be well maintained. Right. So that's what it's all about. And just looking to see, um, beds, when you're walking down the hall, just notice in rooms. Um, and I promise you every administrator, um, and all the marketing people fuss at the staff about, I walked down, um, to 300 hall today and none of the beds were made or four beds right. were unmade. And it's the middle of the day. You want the beds to be made up. You can tell when they're made up that people are organized and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and they care, you know, yeah. they care what it looks like. So those are just little things to look for and watch for looking at your floors. Um, people are going to more LVP these days. We used to have just the VCT yeah. tile back in the day yeah. and everybody had to strip and wax it. And oh my goodness, I don't even want to talk about that. Um, it's, that's a tough job too. Um, but but if you're if you're looking at VCT tile floors like that, then they're they should shine. There should mm. be a pop to them and they should shine. And that tells you that they do care and that they right. are taking care of the building and maintaining the floors and things. It shouldn't be dull. General information to talk about. So I've got several bullet points in this. So I'm going to try to zip down through them as much as I can. Right. So asking to see the room that your loved one's going to be staying in. Okay. If you haven't made a decision yet that you are going to that facility and you're just touring, then that's one thing. But if you're leaning toward that or whatever, or even if they just say, yes, we have a bed available, so you go tour, then ask to see the room that you might go into. Yeah. Um, you know, there may be little things. You may say, mm, I'm not sure. I think they would like a window. I think they would like the window bed better. You know, if it's available, those kind of things. But just ask to see that. If there's going to be a roommate and you already know that, I'd ask to meet the roommate. Mm -hmm. um, you know your loved one well enough to know 
If they'll get along most with of the them time, yeah, who they're yeah. going to get along with. Now, you know, nothing's written in stone. We change rooms all the time for people um, yeah. because everybody doesn't get along all the time. So, you know, mm -hmm. that can happen. Um, but how many residents are in a room? Um, back in the day, again, there used to be facilities that had three beds in a room. Some oh. have four. Um, some facilities may still have a room that has four beds in it. So you have to ask just you know, how many, because if you want just a semi-private or a private, you're going to probably have had that conversation up front anyway. But yeah, there are some, but look, don't, don't think it's all bad because we had some ladies at one of my facilities that that was, it was a four bedroom. And as far as they were concerned, that was their apartment. Oh. And you better act right when you walked in there and they kept it <laughs> neat as a pen. And it was just yeah. almost funny, but it's great socialization, truly. So true. it's not bad. That's true. So, but ask about that. How many residents are in the room? Um, do staff assist uh, getting everybody to the dining room? I, there will be a main dining room, uh, but you can ask to see the main dining room. And then ask them if they are going to assist um, your loved one in getting to the dining room. Now, your loved one may not want to go to the dining room, so you can ask about that um, if they have to and um, if they can eat in their room, if they choose to, and how does the staff deal with that? Do they make sure that their, you know, plate gets down there and all those kind of things. And what happens with that truly is there's a communication slip with dietary dietary gets it changed mm -hmm. over, but people change their mind at the last minute. Let so, me ask you well, this for people that may wonder, mm -hmm. uh, like for example, and we'll be discussing this on the, the ne next block talk, as far as assist living and memory care communities, which of course private pay, which is different than what we're talking about here with nursing home. But with that said, someone that has a loved one that uh, has dementia, they need to go into memory care. Does the nursing home separate those uh, out like the communities do? No, okay. no, not necessarily. Um, there is in nursing home, there is a program called restorative dining. So there may be residents that um, speech therapy is working with and restorative is working with, and they might need more cueing. They might need a little more assistance, things like that. And if they're in that program, most of the time you're going to find either a separate area in the dining room where those residents are seated or a separate dining room. Um, okay. My last facility that I was full-time with had a separate restorative dining room. And that's where those residents were able to go. Um, but overall, in a, in, a those, in, a, in, a, in a particular hall, there could be a mix of memory care and then other people that, yeah. I think it's a good, it's, a, it's an important yeah. Thank yeah. In a nursing realize. home. Yeah. Yeah. In a nursing home more so, you know, in assisted living and we'll get into this, that next one, but in assisted living, of course you would have probably a memory care and then you have the assisted living side. Different. Not to say that yeah. some in, in assisted living don't have dementia. They do. Right. As it progresses, the staff deals with that. Um, but in a nursing home, yes, it's a mixture. Um, your neighbor may, you know, and I think that's important to know because I've been into some nursing homes and you can visually see the difference in, in the patients or, or the residents, right? So if yeah. you see someone that maybe is, you know, further into the throes of dementia, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's a reflection of the care they are or are not receiving. That's just the state they're in. And they just yes. happen to be mixed in with people that may be, you know, be a assisted living level, so to speak, but still in the nursing yeah. home. Yeah, you, th that's very true. Very good point. Um, you, you know, it 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 may be that um, you know, activities tries to work with them a little bit different, mm -hmm. but when it comes yeah. to to the feeding and and those kind of things, there may be some in the main dining room that you right. know maybe they yep. do have dementia. But just because they have dementia doesn't mean they can't feed themselves either. Correct. Yeah. You know, depends on where they are with it. Those kind of things. So all that all matters. Right. But just look at the dining room. Ask those kind of questions. Um, and then, uh, let's see, choosing meals, are there options? Do they have something that is available all day? Um, mm. A lot of facilities have gone to doing that instead of just saying, okay, we have an alternate because you have to have at least an alternate, but they will have an available all day menu. So that means that a resident could come up and say, um, I want something off the all day menu. So I want a salad or I want a hamburger or I want a grilled cheese sandwich and soup, you know, whatever. Yeah. Those are the kind of things you're going to have on the available all day um, and that okay. kind of thing. Now, you know, I, there are nursing homes that have gone to 
um, having almost like the hospital does where you pick your meal. But that's that's not the norm. So what you are mm. probably going to find is that there's a menu that is set. Um, there's an alternate or there's an available all day. Um, okay. And they can choose from from any of that. OK, um, let's see. Can residents choose? We talked about that. Families um, able to reserve either a conference room or utilize the dining room to do a private family dinner or to have a birthday party. Most nursing homes are going to accommodate that in one way or another because okay. we want families coming in. So yeah. ask those questions and be involved with that. But yes, ask about that and just make sure where they have um, an outdoor space. And this has become kind of important in the last few years and talking about the outdoor spaces. Um, you know, it has to be the residents are not to be left unattended. They're, they're yeah. you're not supposed to leave them unattended. Now, you know, if a resident, if the staff can see them and those kind of things, there's courtyards at a lot of res at a lot of nursing homes and those kind of things. And then a lot of nursing homes have outside cameras um, that can see those areas and that kind of thing. But you want to know, you want to know how the staff deals with that. You want to know that they are not just going to be left out there. Things can happen. So you just want to ask those questions. And I would want to see the space. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it may be that the only outside space they have is a smoking porch. Well, your resident doesn't mm -hmm. smoke, they're not going to want to go to the smoking porch. Right. So where yeah. can they get outside and those kind of things? Activities will take them out a lot of times. But, you know, there's a lot of people that just like being outdoors. They just want to go yeah. sit outside and drink a cup of coffee. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but just ask about that. Um, security, security procedures, um, what's in place. Most places are going to have doors that are key padded. Uh, if there's a door that's not key padded, it's probably going to be like a front door that's right there with a the receptionist that can see it all the time. Those kind of things. Most of them are going to be key padded and the residents are not allowed to have the code. Now, let me just tell you this. I've been at a facility where we had what they consider an elopement. Residents mm. get the code. I don't mm. know how they manage, but they Houdini somehow <laughs> and they can get the code. So um, and then you end up changing the codes and those kind of things. But it, yeah. it happens and it's not because staff is negligent. Yeah, that's not it. We get blamed for that, but that is not it. But they're keypadded. They have a code and, and residents can get sneaky. I've had residents sit back and watch you do the code. Yeah. So it happens. Um, but just make sure about their safety procedures. Generators. Um, I've had families ask me about this um, several years back in the state of Georgia. Mm. They did a grant um, and most nursing homes have generators. They may be hardwired in. They may not be hardwired in, but you kind of need to know that. You need to know what yeah. they do in an emergency situation. They're going to have and they're going to practice fire drills and all those things because we have to. So they're going to have all that in place. My questions about that would just kind of be, um, what do you do with air temp changes? You know, we're in Georgia, mm. we're in middle Georgia, yep. it gets hot. So what do you do if the air goes out and the generator is right. not going to run the air all through the building, those kind of things. It's going to run dietary so they can feed them most of the time, you know, emergency kind of things. Um, but I would ask those questions just so you're aware, because in any emergency situation, you always have an option to come pick up your loved one. Mm, and okay. I can tell you, That's the good staff point. would probably love for you to come pick up your loved <laughs> one because it's a lot harder. <laughs> it is. It really yeah. is. Um, so speaking of staff, staffing, everybody's favorite topic. Um, Number one is a very important question. Staff turnover. And let me just. Yeah. I can't help it to get a little defensive for nursing homes because, you know, that's yeah. my wheelhouse and that's my love. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, staff turnover is high. Staff turnover is it turnover is higher now. Thank you, COVID, than it used right. to be. The CNAs is what you have more staff turnover in. And then the other piece of that is that nine out of 10 CNAs work two and three jobs. They just do. Wow. Now, yeah. You know, salary has has wages have changed for CNAs and it has gotten much better um, for CNAs over the last few years. So that that is much better for them. And you're starting to see some of that stabilize. Agency is not king anymore. Some of that's gone away. Um, my last facility, we got all agency out of the building and we did not run any agency. Um, so it's it's uh, my last two, as a matter of fact. So mm. it's. um 
it, it's going away a little bit, but I would ask about that. You know, are you pretty stable? How long have your nurses been on board? We have to yeah. report all that stuff anyway. So they have to report all the staff stability. So they should and all know that. the answer to that. So they should know what their turnover is. They're going to know what the staff turnover is. Um, and let's see, when was the last time they utilized agency if they're using it? So just ask about agency if they're using it, then, you know, what's the ratio on agency? Are you running more yeah. agency than you're running your own staff? Those are fair questions to know and to ask. Um, and then clinical supervisor. Some people will have a supervisor on every shift. Some don't. Some will have, um, of course, the department head staff is always there during the day, but three to 11 when shift change comes. Some people are doing 12 hour shifts. So they're doing 7A, mm -hmm. 7P. Um, and then some are doing the eight hour shifts. So do you have a three to 11 supervisor? Do you have a supervisor that's there three to 11, even if it's 12 hour shifts, but is there an evening supervisor? Do you have an RN round the clock? Those are just the mm -hmm. typical questions you know, to ask. I will right. tell you that in nursing homes, we are required to have an RN eight consecutive hours every day, seven days a week. So on the weekend, when you go in, and I have people say this all the time, well, there's nobody here for me to talk to on the weekend. Yes, there is. There is an RN supervisor in that building somewhere. Ask okay. to speak to them. So they are there. So ask about that. Ask who the RN supervisor is on the weekend. General daily clinical. So <laughs> ask about staff making rounds. And I put this in here to talk about it a minute because I really want to help families to understand. Yes, people walk into us all the time at a nursing home and they say, well, you have to make rounds every two hours. Yes, there's there's regs out there that want us to make rounds every two hours. Now let's get down to realistic what happens every day. Yeah. I, I tell families it's going to be every two, between two to three hours. And you have to realize that because other things happen. You know, you can go into one resident, a CNA can go in to change one resident and that resident today decides to be combative. Right. Now she's having to back out. She's having to go get help. Yep. Um, you know, possibly um, there can be an emergency that comes up and that's all hands on deck when that happens. Yeah. So if things like that happen, then yes, it might be a longer time frame before they get into your mom. When the CNAs are making their rounds and they're walking down that hall and they're checking and changing, as we call it, and they're making those rounds down the hall, I promise they're not just throwing their hands up and saying, well, I'm just going to take forever because I won't yeah. do. They're not. Things are happening and they're doing their best to get there. But just know that it's not going to be dead on two hours. Right. Now, during a regular time frame, your loved one also should not sit with a call light on for 30 mm. and 40 minutes. So no, that's not acceptable. And if you're getting that, that's when you need to go talk to the clinical staff. You need to go talk to the director of nursing or the right. supervisor. Get to somebody. Um, so dementia training. Um, dementia training is, is near and dear to my heart and yours. Um, something mm -hmm. that we have recently talked about a lot um, with having had PK Bevel on and Tifa Snow on. Um, yep. And looking at some of that. So dementia training is something that um, nursing homes do. Um, they they have to do training with dementia and those kind of things. But not all nursing homes are going to do it to the level of they a should. Tifa Snow or PK Bevel. They're not. Right. <laughs> um, it just doesn't happen that way. Most of them have a staff development. Um, but they should have some training, right? I mean, They should have training. It, it, yeah. They have a staff development nurse there. Um, there is training out there and it is given. And then they may do it even online training and some of those kind of things. But there are things that are done, videos, things like that. But it's not just at that high level. But I would mm -hmm. ask about that because if they haven't had any dementia training, then that might be an issue for you. But just ask because you want to know if your family member has dementia and those kind of things. So um, asking about that is always a good thing. And let's see, where am I? Physician coverage. Let's talk about that a minute. So ask about the physician coverage. Everybody has a medical director at a nursing home. Um, some medical directors have nurse practitioners. 90% of them have nurse practitioners that come in. Um, and so you can, uh, the nurse practitioner may come more often than the physician. They mm -hmm. may come in together. Who knows? But I would just ask about that. Um, and then I would ask if there's other attending physicians. Some facilities have one medical director and his nurse practitioners, and that's all that come there. But some 
have um, a medical director and they may have a second or third attending position, depending on the size of the nursing home usually. Yeah. But there may be more than one. And then let me clear this up for you too real quick. I didn't throw it in there, but let me just say this so that everybody knows. Just because your loved one is at the facility, the medical director there is the one that is managing the medications now, not okay. their community physician. But that doesn't take away that, yes, you can take your loved one out. They can go to the community physician. We just want to make sure we coordinate that with our physician at the nursing home and that they're coordinating the care on that and the medication management. Um, but just ask about that. Ask if they have telemedicine. That's a big thing now. Some facilities mm. use it. Uh, the last one I was in did, and um, and it's really good. So, um, and then we were talking about the eating while ago. So how do staff really, nurse management mainly, but how do they watch and make sure um, that your resident's really eating? How do they know if they're not? Yeah. Um, you know, they have tray cards. The CNAs do have to report that. They have to log and document that. So just ask about those things and and ask if they kind of know what goes on with that and all that. Because um, what you're looking for is you want to make sure that you understand how they're going to watch the weight loss. Okay. You know, there's dementia. They're going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. At some point, yeah. they're going to start losing weight. Um, I mean, you've seen it, I'm sure, with your mom and things mm -hmm. like that. And so yep. it, it does happen. But nursing homes track weight once a month. Um, they talk about people with weight loss every week. And anybody okay. that admits to a nursing home, they're going to track them for four weeks. But just okay. ask about how they look at weight loss and what they do there. Um, residents can absolutely get assistance with meals, but just ask how they do that, what their thoughts are on that. These are just conversational questions for you to be asking for these to, to right. go through when you go through and tour. And then ask about the full range of medical care. Um, do they do IV therapy? Can they do IV antibiotics there? Um, they should be able to work with wound vacs if someone has a surgical wound or debridement at the hospital or something like that. And they come with a wound vac. Are the nurses trained in that? Um, and they should be. Have they been trained in IV therapy? Most of them are um, and should be. Do they do catheter care? Do they do pacemaker checks, ostomy, colostomy bags, those kind of things? All that comes into a nursing home now. It's a lot like a med surge unit at a hospital these days. So make sure that they're aware and that they do, you know, check with all that. Trachs is another one. Some facilities mm. don't take trachs. Okay. Some do. Most facilities don't have vents. There's a few around the state of Georgia that do, nursing homes that have a vent unit. Um, most of them do not, but if they're on a trach, you do want to ask about the trach care and have they been trained in trach care? Because that's a big deal, too. Um, medication management, I just touched on a little bit, but how that gets addressed with a physician and how therapy gets addressed. So nursing homes have a meeting every morning, clinical meeting, and they talk about all the patients. They talk about everything that went on in the last 24 hours. OK, um, if somebody's having behaviors, if somebody's had a decline, if somebody's not eating, any of those kind of things going on, they're aware of it and they're watching it. And chances are they're already on top of it. Um, they're going to talk about it. They're going to notify the physician if needed. Um, you know, there are medications that can help stimulate appetite. They may go that route. They may add supplements for stimulating appetite, different things like that. Medication management is going to go straight back to the physician. Um, but I will tell you, I, I, I trust, I've, I've always trusted the nurses to look at that with the with the pharmacist. We've asked right. pharmacists to review their meds sometimes. You want to make that sure things aren't interacting and just make sure they've got that process in place where they do their clinical meeting and that they talk with their medical director about all that. And they will. That That is absolutely what they are doing. So here's one of my favorite topics. Um, and I say that as sarcastically as I can. Transportation. <laughs> uh, we all hate transportation. Um, and I'm telling you, somebody has missed a good opportunity in not opening a transport company for Medicaid really? residents. Unfortunately, okay. in the state of Georgia, there's one company that has the contract. They're not very ah. reliable okay. for Medicaid. Why is that? Medicaid. Why is there just one contract? Yes, yeah, they, sure they outsource it. So that one company outsources it to different, and I'm not calling any okay. names, but yeah. to different companies that have okay. vans, okay, and they yeah. bill Medicaid. Okay. So Medicare runs different, but they bill Medicaid. So the problem we have is that I, I truly cannot tell you how many times it's been that many over the years, not, not exaggerating, that I've had family members come in my office mad 
and ready to just chew me out because mama missed her appointment and that was an important appointment and that's your fault. No, it's not. Okay. The nursing homes have zero to say about Over transport. That. Okay. The only thing we can do is give you an 800 number. You can call that 800 number and you can file a complaint. Medicare is different. If they're there under Medicare, the facility is going to pay for transportation. Medicare does not cover non-emergency transport. So you're never going to get Medicare to take somebody to a doctor's appointment. They're not going to pay for that. Um, so that's why it falls either under private pay or Medicaid. Okay. okay. Activities and just general information. Um, ask about activities. Um, make sure they're doing something outside of bingo, but most residents won't bingo <laughs> at least a couple of times a week. It's a funny thing, but they do. <laughs> um, church services, ask about that. Um, they should be providing that and have church groups that come in and volunteer to come in and be there on Sundays. Some even come in on Wednesday nights and that kind of thing. And a lot of facilities have different churches that come. So they have offer more than one and those kind of things. But the residents absolutely have a right if they're Catholic to have a Catholic priest. It's hard to get, but you have to make the attempt, you know, gotcha. to try to do that. So just ask. It depends on your religious background and, and um, what you follow there and what it is you want to see for your loved one. Right. Um, and then just providing assistance with dressing, bathing, and all the other daily living tasks and things. And they do. And how's that determined? Um, you know, if they come in for short-term therapy and that kind of thing, therapy is going to make that call up front. Um, but it's going to be through a series of questions and assessments that the nursing home does. Um, and they're just, and they're going to talk to family. If the resident can't answer for themselves, then they're going to talk to the family. Um, and they're they're going to lay eyes on the resident to see what the resident can and can't do for themselves so that they should be giving assistance when it's needed. And if you know all that up front that mama still that she can't dress herself anymore, then share it. The yeah. more information they have, the better y'all can make that work together. Um, meals. Um, this is this is kind of a big thing the last few years. There's a lot of people that come in and say mama's diabetic and she needs a diabetic diet. Well, or vegetarian. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, now you've got vegan, yeah, vegans, got everything. Yeah, gluten free, all that stuff. We <laughs> we had somebody gluten free. That was tough. Um, I yeah. thought the staff was going to shoot me for taking her. Um, but anyway, <laughs> now that was at an assisted living, not even the nursing home. But yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, um, it, it is hard sometimes. But the the important thing to know is just your basic things like um, diabetic diets or renal diets or no added salt, no added sugar. Some of that in most nursing homes, not all, has kind of gone away. And that's because of national food guidelines and dietary yeah. guidelines. Um, the thinking became a few years ago that someone that's diabetic, it is not going to hurt them to have one piece of cake. And if their nurse is aware that they've had one piece of cake, then they know. Now, your brittle diabetics and things like that, people are not going to be handing them cake. But they just know that everybody may not offer specialized diets. It may right. just be this is what we have and that's what they, they do. But they're going to watch them. They are very careful about that. They don't willy-nilly make those decisions. Um Okay, help me help me find where I am, Mark. Help me find where I am. Okay, trans it's what we the transportation. About. We kind of touched on transportation. Yeah, uh, and, we did, yeah. and and there's you know the appointments. Um, um, there's the only time there's going to be a fee is if you have to do it private pay because it's um something that. Uh, you don't want to cover the, med the Medicaid's not gonna, or you can't get transport through the Medicaid. And the family says, well, I'll, I'll pay for it or whatever. Typically yeah. there's not a fee for transport because it's either going to bill under Medicaid or they're under Medicare and the facility has to cover it. One of the two yeah. um, is usually how that works. So um, the other thing I want to mention here though, is a couple other things right there at the end, the ombudsman program. I have people ask me about this all the time. If you will look in the facility, when you tour the facility, you will see the posters. They have to be hung. Okay. It is regulation and it's for the ombudsman. Um, everybody in the state of Georgia has somebody in that region that covers that building. I cannot encourage people enough that if you really feel like there's something going on that you want to talk to somebody about with the state, so to speak, 
-hmm. call the ombudsman. She is a resident advocate. And that could be your first step. If you've talked to the facility and they're not doing what you think, that ombudsman can get to that building way before the state's going to get down there. Okay. State's very behind on complaints and those kind of things. So call your ombudsman. Um, let them help you. Most of them are, they're great resident advocates. They do not share with us. Um, even when a resident tells them something when they come in the building, they visit once a month. And if a resident tells them something and says it's confidential, they can come to my office and say, I had a complaint about this, that, and the other, but they will not tell me who it is. Um, so it's a really good program for families to utilize. Um, beauty shop, barbershop, you know, there's typically a small fee. Um, the facility does not cover that. That is for the family to cover. It can get covered out of their resident trust fund. Mm -hmm. Um that the resident has set up there at the building and the business office maintains that. So, but just ask about it and ask how often they come in. Sometimes they come in once a week. Sometimes they come in once a month, depending on the building and who they have. Finances. Uh, okay. Overall cost. You have probably already had this conversation up front before you get to a nursing home. Yeah. Especially if you're coming out of a hospital because the case managers covered it with you. You're coming in for Medicare. This is not a podcast to get into all that on, although we yeah. do have some of that coming up and we'll talk about that. Um, but the overall cost, just ask about the private pay, um, ask about private pay for a semi-private room because it's different for a private room than a semi-private room. Just ask those questions. You should already know up front if there is a Medicare copay that you're going to be responsible for. Um, Medicare has a copay after the first 20 days. It's $204 a day this year. Um, that changes. Uh, but just ask the business office at that facility is who you need to be having those conversations with. Um, and they can, can help you with all of that. They can talk with you about long-term care insurance. I will tell you that the facilities do not file the long-term care insurance for you. Neither does assisted living. Okay. You are responsible for filing those yourself. They will pay you, then you pay the building. Um, yep. And we'll get into some of that kind of stuff down the road. Um, but that is one of the things just to know on that piece. Um, the facility will assist in completing the Medicaid application. They do that online. But please know this, there are deadlines. If you miss the deadline, you missed your opportunity. And it starts okay. over. You cannot miss a deadline with Medicaid. That's very important. Yep. Medicaid sets that, not the facility. So that's up to them, not us. Um, I made it through, Mark. I feel like I'm just speeding through this. <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. I mean, I'm, I'm telling just... you, I know, I know. And I'm glad it's in blogs so that everybody can read it too. Yeah. Um, I did post some of this out on um, Facebook at one point. So you may have mm -hmm. seen some of it, but please go back because I've tweaked it a little bit. So please go back and read the blog. But here's just a couple of final thoughts on all this. When you go in, most people, you're you're scattered, you're tired. You're overwhelmed. exhausted, overwhelmed, you name it. Ask to meet the administrator and ask to meet the director of nursing. Yeah. Sometimes the marketing people don't think to, to do that. Sometimes the administrator may be tied up. Um, but if possible, just ask to meet them. The one thing that, that I would say, and I, I think my administrator friends would agree with me over the years, is that... Um, that administrator can set the tone for that building every day. Mm -hmm. And if you walk in there in a bad mood, you can set the tone for the building. Yeah. So it, it is important to meet the administrator and try to engage a little bit with them and see, and then meet the director of nursing. Because at the end of the day, when you have a complaint and the staff on the floor has not fixed it, they are going to be your go-to people. That administrator yeah. And that director of nursing, they are going to be the two that you go to to get physician stuff fixed, medication orders, diets. It doesn't matter what it laundry. I didn't even touch yeah. on laundry. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, so, it is. Yeah. It is a lot. And I think it's just incredible that your knowledge and being in this industry that long is phenomenal. And I think it's so important when you sit here and I, and sometimes I find myself just mouth wanting to drop open because when you when you think about going through all this as a family what a treasure trove of resources just on this little blog talk we just did and you're yeah. trying to rush through it because there you could talk for probably all day with all yeah. the different stuff 
but I think it's important and I, and I think it's fantastic. I, I love that we're doing this. So with that said, uh, share this, subscribe, help yeah. us spread the word of this podcast. We have another episode coming up. Part two would be uh, the same thing for assisted living or memory care, as well as some future guests. And, and we'll be, we'll be getting actually a, I guess a list of upcoming broadcasting shows so people can pick and choose uh, what yeah. would be a, applicable for them. Did I say that word yeah. right with my yeah, Southern gun? I said a big word, didn't I? Yeah. Well, and we really have some good ones. We really have some really good ones coming up. We we yep. actually have um, some people lined up that are have some great information to yeah. share. So, um, you know, we have um, Seth, elder care attorney, that mm -hmm. will be coming on, and we'll be talking yep. about some different things with him. And um, we've got a Medicare um, who I told was she's the Medicare guru that I and know. Jennifer's coming um, back you know, again. Yep, Jennifer's yep. coming back on, and we're going to talk about Medicare versus. She'll be proud of me for this Medicare Advantage because uh -huh. I'm going to call it managed care. Um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got some really good ones coming up, and Fantastic. and I said meet the administrator. Listen, I appreciate the compliments, Mark. I really do, but I promise you. I could introduce you just off the top of my head to three or four different administrators that know twice what I know. They just wow. are phenomenal Jeez. people. So yeah. yeah, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> well, and, and, and again, as we close out, CareQuest is here to help guide and direct. So if anybody is having to face the decisions of placing their loved ones in a nursing home and is here to, to uh, take your questions and reach out and, and, and ask and Anne can help direct you in that and of course carequest makes its living off of placing people into assist living or memory care or find a good in-home care agency so uh, with that said keep us in mind for that so until yeah. the next show we will see everybody then so thanks Andy. You one, say something? just one yeah just okay. one thing just right. don't, when we put these questions out and you read the blog you know i really encourage everybody to um especially you're right that's carequest is um, helping with the assisted living um, and, and getting you placed, but it's not about just getting you placed. Mm -hmm. Let CareQuest go with you. Yep. Let us help you know what questions to ask. To ask. And to walk and make that tour with you and have all of that. Because sometimes it's a little uncomfortable for family members to go in yep. and ask in those questions. And, you know, we yep. don't care. <laughs> we'll go in and ask <laughs> exactly. them. Yeah, we are your advocate, right? right. That's the, the important part. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, and thanks again. And we'll see everybody on the next show. All right. Thanks.